Tonight is a pertinent reminder to the newly installed Kenya Kwanzaa government that high-level corruption in Kenya is real. It's not fiction. It's not politics. It's not a lie. It is a fact. Whether denied or ignored, high-level corruption in Kenya is indeed the proverbial elephant in the room. I submit this as an urgent reminder to the new administration for two reasons. First, there was very little mention of the war on corruption in President William Ruto's inaugural address on Tuesday. And secondly, there have been a rather sustained attack on state agencies by Deputy President Rigadi Gashagwa, who earlier today directed his latest fire at the Directorate of Criminal Investigations, DCI. We have told DCI to go back to Kiabu Road and wait for crimes to be reported there. They have no business in government offices, hovering all over and creating a toxic environment for service delivery. We cannot have detectives in government offices because they poison the atmosphere and the environment for civil servants to deliver. Now, the new deputy president, who has also sustained a narrative of being a victim of persecution of state agencies, moved to absolve county governments of wrongdoing, claiming that it is instead the investigators at fault. ...by detectives pretending to be fighting grafts, whereas they were just extorting money from governors and officials, is a thing of the past. Then the deputy president suggested how governors suspected of corruption should be handled by investigators in future. issue that needs to be addressed as it should be. We are not saying we don't fight graft, but let us be decent people. Let us have respect for elected leaders. Let the head of that particular organization write a letter to the governor himself and not delegate to some junior officers to address a sitting governor, because that is not right. Because when you embarrass an elected leader in front of his juniors and you go away, how do you expect him to perform the following day? Now, two things suggested by the deputy president should be found disturbing. First, that hint of preferential special treatment for governors or senior political leaders suspected of corruption. And disturbing issue is the suggestion that government officers should be out of bounds for corruption investigators. Now, attention of Deputy President Rigade Gashagwa in the new administration should be drawn to a few undeniable facts. First, government officers have previously been abused and have indeed been venues of transactions worthy of attention of the crime and corruption investigators. Nearly all high-level corruption cases, whether Goldenberg or Anglo Leasing, Alfie House or NYS scandals, have traces, direct lines to physical addresses that end up being government offices. On the Deputy President's assurance to governance, a reminder is pertinent that official reports from different state agencies have highlighted cases of rampant corruption in counties. Records of the Ethics and Anti-Corruption Commission, ESCC, for example, show that there are several governors who have active cases in cor of co corruption-related cases in court. It is also well known that some of the files lie in wait at the Directorate of Public Prosecution, DPP, while some other cases are still under investigation. The bottom line is there is corruption at both levels of government, and there are suspects for each of those cases. In the run-up to the election, the ESCC submitted to the IEBC a list of 241 aspirants for public office with integrity-related cases. Though the submission counted for little in the end, it remains a reminder of the situation on the ground. So, whether denied or ignored, official corruption remains the elephant 
in Kenya's governance room. So it had better not be denied. That 